Hi, I'm Genevieve. Thanks so much for having me here today. Um, I coordinate fundraising for the International Astronomical Union. And today we're going to be talking a little bit about some of the uh, correlations between fundraising and um, astronomical outreach. Uh, we're also going to be talking about the challenges and giving you a couple of tips to consider to really transform your fundraising and attract more money for public engagement activity within astronomy. So you're all probably very familiar with um, the university uh, funding, which comes from uh, governments predominantly and runs into the billions. We're not looking at that form of fundraising here. We're looking at the nonprofit sector. And as you can see, there's an awful lot of money um, involved and an awful lot of opportunity for public engagement to um, secure some funding. Um, I've given an example of international development aid, also um, the UK and the US, where there's really some uh, you know, one of the most established sectors, particularly the US, which is the market leader. And uh, one of my favourite statistics, which is um, given the IOU is also a non-profit, that if we were all a, um, a, a combined um, region, we would uh, have uh, the fifth largest economy in the world. And um, there are a few things to consider as well as you look at this amount of wealth, you know, one of the first things you need to think about is who do I go to, you know, within this vast uh, amount of money, what are the key audiences that I should be looking to define? Um, one of the things I often hear a lot in astronomy is people saying, you know, hey, there's companies out there, I should be able to raise money from companies. Um, they're actually not the most generous. Actually, the general public are far and away the most generous. They've given over 400 billion in the US alone in 2019 compared to corporates who gave 21 billion. And within the UK as well, we know that um, corporate giving is one to two percent of that entire 250 billion figure. So when bear in mind as you're sort of thinking about who is my audience, who are my messages, um, think about where you're going to have the most success. Because really one of the key questions as I considered some of these points and um, given the feedback I've heard from the community, um, is astronomy outreach really receiving the funding it needs? If not, why not? And what do we need to do to change? So now is a really good point to perhaps consider some of the shared challenges we face in fundraising and public engagement. Um, and I'm borrowing from the very excellent uh, John Besley's research here, um, where he re you know, really stood out to me when he talked about how public engagement is just this sort of standalone goal or objective. It doesn't really look at the wider, bigger picture. Fundraising suffers from exactly the same issue. It's very transactional rather than thinking about it strategically um, as a sort of a means to an end. It's not sort of a means to an end in itself. Um, it tends to focus very much on short term objectives, and I do recognise that's quite challenging when you have European Union funding, for example, which is on three year cycles. Um, the benefit is for the organisation individual. Is it really about broader society? Um, quite inward looking as well. Um, not necessarily um, a collaborator, um, which also comes under the competition angle. Who are you working with? Uh, why are you working in isolation? Are there ways we could be combining together? Um, and there seem to be, um, just thinking again on John's research, you know, some very prioritising the conflicting objectives. You know, am I here for my donors? Am I here for my institution? Am I here for um, for the for the government? You know, what 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 is my audience? And there's you know no real sort of clarity on this quite often. So how do we seek some clarity around this? Well, one of the things you can look at is your organization's message. So in fundraising, we talk a lot about what we call a minibus analogy, which is used a lot in fundraising training. And I, you know, why will no one find my minibus is, is uh, something that we hear a lot about in the sector. Um, I replaced minibus for telescope here. It makes it hopefully a little bit more relevant. No one's gonna find our telescope. Why is that? Think about what that telescope actually does. You know, why do you need it? What question, what problem is it going to address? How is it going to make things improve for the better? Is it about science education, getting more girls into STEM, critical science, developing of critical uh, thinking skills, um, and sort of combating uh, science denial? Are you looking at long term impact on educational outcomes, employability, um, re reduced polarization? All these sorts of things really need to be considered when you're looking at sort of what do I need money for? It's all about how you position yourself. So also we talk a lot about impact, which is front and center of your message. How are you contributing predominantly um, to the sustainable development goals? And every single country in the world is meant to be addressing the sustainable development goals. So using that as a framework to position your message is very helpful. Also look at the SDG indicators as well. They're available um, online from the UN. How are you helping countries and donors address they um, address these targets that they have to meet. Um, also look at your relevant national regional frameworks as well. I've listed a few here. 
Bear in mind that these also ultimately relate back to the sustainable development goals as well, but they do really help give a sort of, um, I think, a regional or national um, context to some of the projects you may be developing. And as you can see here um, is an example from the IAU. This is what we have put um, on our um, for our SDGs when we talk to funders so that they can very clearly see how we're addressing it, and how we can help them um, achieve their own impact. So how do you sort of design this message then? The key tools we use are what we call a case for support and a theory of change, and they're drawn from your strategy and yearly business plan. Um, and you can use these for any fundraising activity, goes from general public and crowdfunding appeals right through to uh, major gift work for seven figures and above. Um, your theory of change is what's the problem, what's the solution, and very crucially, how do you fit into delivering that solution? Of course, we can't do everything. So what is that component? What is that part that we can do very well, which um, helps address the problem and delivers the solution for um, the SDGs? The case of support is a document, a very important document. You put all of things in here, which you can then draw upon for proposals, for short documents to sort of get people interested in your work. It contains a vision, mission, values, um, case studies, really important, people's lived experiences, uh, real life stories, um, and also crucially, of course, your budget. Um, do give some lots of consideration to your finances and financial planning, not just for projects, but your, for your organisations in general. Make sure you're transparent as well. It's very normal to share accounts. It's very normal to share um, budgets for programmes and budgets for your organisation. Don't also be donor led. I see this a lot. This is not just something that happens in astronomy. It happens everywhere. Really, you need to have confidence in that you are the experts and you know what you're doing. Um, if a call comes out um, and it's relevant to your interests, then you should go for it. Um, however, you shouldn't be changing. Um, you shouldn't be changing your programs or your projects simply because there's a funding pot out there and you feel the need to bend to that particular donor's wishes. Actually, you'll see an awful lot more success if you develop your theory of change in case for support. And you're very, very clear from the outset, this is what we're going to do. And this is how we achieve it. And this is why we want you to come on board. Critically as well, this is how you also demonstrate to donors how you can help them deliver impact. You can also utilise digital media to show your message. And finally, think about your elevator pitch. You've got 30 seconds to a minute or two to get the importance of what you're talking about across. How do you refine what you're talking about down into a couple of minutes? It is possible. So finally, yes, again, remember you are the experts and you have an awful lot to offer to donors as well. It is not a subordinate um, relationship. So finally, some key takeaways to uh, leave with you. Firstly, remember that people give to people they like. It's all about um, personal relationships. It's not a very detailed scientific proposal. And indeed, in major gift fundraising, we often see it doesn't take much to actually engage someone. They want to know the human story behind what's going on. Um, also, remember to take people on that journey with you as well. Um, the moment you have someone come into contact with your organisation, keep them up to date with your mission and vision. How are you getting how are you getting on? Um, have you achieved it? Have you had successes? Have you had you know, challenges? Um, make sure that you're always involved people with how you are developing and involving um, your projects and programmes and your organisation as a whole. Um, a very important one um, in astronomy, I think in particular, just assume people do not know what you are talking about. Why is it so important? Why are the night skies so important? Why is public engagement so important? What does it do? How does astronomy play a role? Um, I've, <laughs> the amount of times I've spoken to funders who've gone, astronomy, I don't see how that's relevant. You know, So bear in mind, people actually don't know why this is important and make sure you factor that into your um, all of your communications. <clears throat> so fundraising campaigns as well are also about awareness raising and engagement on key societal issues. So fundraising is gives you a real opportunity to put um, core messages out there. Um, we see this a lot, particularly say, in um, uh, biomedical research, so cancer research, for example. There's a direct correlation between people involved who see something because of a fundraising campaign relates then back to their further understanding of science. So we do play a key role in public engagement as well, particularly um, with the general public. Um, and finally, also remember influencing people, the money will come. And this is really true. Um, this can work at any high value level. This works at any sort of level of the general public. It really works for government as well, which I think is perhaps a really obvious one for public engagement, where you know if you're imparting the importance of your, uh, your science and your astronomy, you are going to be able to leverage more funding. So really remember that you know this is a real key tool for influence and why fundraising and communications tend to work so closely together. 
We are intrinsically linked um, fundraising and public in engagement. This is very, this is this is a fact. Um, and remember, you know, people understand your mission and your goals clearly, then they are far more likely to give you money. So make sure that you are demystifying your message at every step, keeping it short, simple, um, clear and concise language. Um, don't use jargon um, to make sure that you've got your elevator pitch ready. And when you start doing these things, you start seeing people become a lot more engaged and interested with your work and staying with you in the long term as well. So a one off donation can turn into um, into a much longer relationship with your organisation. Um, thank you so much. And I look forward to seeing you all in the Q&A.